live. I'm, there we are. Maybe we're going live now. <laughs> Good I'm morning. Not, I'm not sure what's happening. There we are. <laughs> no, we did. Good, Good morning. morning. And uh, this is uh, us uh, for our Sunday morning Bible study, and we're here to uh, bless you and hopefully bless uh, um, you know other folks that maybe you'll share today and, or like it, and it'll go to your page, and then people will see it. Uh, but by the way, happy Mother's Day. That's right. Happy Mother's for Day. all of the mothers that are listening in the world. You know, you know, if it wasn't for mothers, we wouldn't be here, right? Exactly. <laughs> and if it wasn't for mothers, we would definitely wouldn't be you know, who we are. In fact, you could probably almost say who you are today in your life is how your mother was and hers. But excuse me. I <clears throat> love my mother, Janie Eubanks Moore. Hey, she Mama. is Happy Mother's Day. And my mom, Mary Walker. Mary Walker. And uh, Mama is 89 and Mary Walker is 93. going to be 94 oh, soon. Yes. And uh, so, and then Happy Mother's Day to all our friends and our family and all the girls. Happy Mother's Day to my yes. daughters and our daughters. Yes. And so, you know, God is moving. And he's moving in a mighty way. And we're going to be seeing God's blessing upon our lives more and more and more. And look, this thing we're going through, we, we are, as far as I'm concerned, we're through it. Yeah, because, you know, we're things are cranking back up. Things are starting to look good and crank back up in, in our lives. And, <clears throat> and so here, here's the thing. We're going to be going live Facebook. I think we're... I don't know if we're live, but we're. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I hopefully you're live. If you're out there and you're seeing us, please say something. say something so we know whether we're live or not. So, anyway, um, I'm going to teach it any anyway because actually this is recording, and I can send it back. So. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Are You Righteous? And um, and Susan's going to go sit down with her cup of coffee and I'm going to drink my drink and get a little sip. And I really am wondering if I'm live. You want to go check me out, Susan, and see if I'm live on Facebook? Because according to the way I'm looking, I am. Am I live? Good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, got right. people listening. There are people listening. Hey, Jeanette, Lisa, Darren. <laughs> Okay, let's get into the Word of God. Danny. <laughs> okay, everybody's listening. Okay, thank God. We're going to get into the Word of God. Are you righteous? You know, one of the things that we uh, know, and as, as far along as we've gotten in Revelation with the, the Word of God, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But, you know, there's a question. Are you righteous? You know, the, the word righteous, uh, it, it has a... a, a a deeper meaning than just being in right standing with God. It means it's the equity or of our character and our acts. It's what who we are as Christians and how 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 righteousness is justified in our life, or we are justified and 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 how righteousness stands with us. And you know, a lot of times we think, <clears throat> man, I am moved. I am in the righteousness of God and. You may not be living in a certain way that you should be to have that righteousness be a, a working for you. You know, a lot of times people think, well, you know, I'm the righteousness of God. Everything should be working just right for me. And then nothing works. <clears throat> in fact, it seems like it gets worse. Well, you may be having the problem of walking in the righteousness of God. Having that righteousness be yours, not only in being able to claim it, but in deed, in action, and that righteousness be a part of your life. You know, there's one of the things that I've always said, and I believed in, and I could see in the lives of people, that if you're truly a born-again Christian, if you truly have Jesus Christ in your heart, and you've made a change, you have called out upon him and said, Lord, I need your help. I want you to come into my life and my heart, and I want you to take control of my life. And if you truly have done that, <clears throat> there is going to be a change in your life. It may be a phenomenal, miraculous change in your life. I know that it was in mine, and uh, 
And so, you know, I, I hope that it will be in yours too. <clears throat> Let's look at some scripture. Look at uh, the uh, first scripture there is uh, Matthew chapter 6. I'm stumbling because Chuck Davis just came on and said he can't find uh, me on Facebook. Uh, just click the link, Chuck. Just text him back for me and tell him to click the link I sent him, and he'll go straight to it. But anyway, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God. <clears throat> now, I'm going to stop here because this is really, really, really important. When you're seeking God's kingdom, you're seeking God's rule over your life. You're seeking God's dominion over your life. You're seeking his guidance, his lordship, his direction, his will, his, his way. Because you see, this is where most people go wrong. They're not seeking God. They're not seeking him and seeking what he is. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter one, 5, verse 1, it says, as dear children, imitate God. You know, that's an amazing statement to me, to be able to imitate God. In fact, when I first read it, I said, how, how can I imitate God? God? How can I imitate God? Because he has given you some key things that gives you the ability to do that. That's his word. That's his will. That's his Holy Spirit. And that's him working in your life. God wants you to live the same life he has. The good of all that life and the righteousness of all that life. But you can't unless you seek him. You know, unless your eyes turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things on earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. That's what you do. You got to turn your eyes upon Jesus. Seek him. Seek the Lord. Let him be the thing that you think on every day. You seek him out. You take his word. You know, and, and it, if you're not doing the first part of this scripture, the second part's not going to do you a bit of good. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first him. And then it says, and his righteousness, and I, I like to say this, his right way of doing things. You know, one of the things about this righteousness, especially in this scripture, it's not only talking about the status or place you are in God through Jesus Christ, that you're righteous because Jesus made you righteous, but it's also talking about seeking the right way of doing it. There is a right and a wrong way. And, and, and I, I, I got so many Christians, so many Christian people, that, real, real Christians, if once it's asked Jesus, Jesus in their heart, come to me and count for counseling, and they have troubles in their life. And the reason they have those troubles is because they're not doing it the right way. They're not doing the righteousness of God that's in Christ Jesus. They're not walking it out. They're still living the way they think that they should live. They think the way things were taught to them to live. The, the, you know, it, it, I know people have the attitude. I did it one time myself. Well, you know, I know God's a busy God. I know there's a lot of things going on in his life. <clears throat> I can take care of these small things. And when it comes to the big things, I'll, I'll take them to him. There have been times in my life to where the only time I called out upon him was whenever I really needed something bad. But I'm going to let you know, there's a right way of walking in the righteousness of God. And whenever you seek first God, you seek first his rule, seek first his way, seek first his desire, then his righteousness or his right way of doing it, then all these things will be added unto you. All what things? All the things you need, your shelter, your power bill, your car, your job, your prosperity, the things that God wants you to have. He wants you to be full and complete. He wants you to lack nothing. But you know, there's a certain way it's got to be done. You know, I always say and tell people, you know, 
you want to do it the right way because if you do it the wrong way, you're not going to get what already belongs to you. You know, I got money in the bank. I got money in the bank. Hallelujah. But you know, there's a right way to get that money out of the bank. If I try to get that money out of that bank the wrong way, I'm not going to get it out. In fact, they might even close down my account until they can prove that it was me trying to get that money out. But you know, there's that right way of doing it. And so I go the right way and I get the money that I need because it's mine. It belongs to me already. It's the same way with the kingdom of God. There's a right way and a wrong way. And if you do it the right way, all the things you need is going to be added unto you. <clears throat> Listen, the word of God. This is the key right here. I want you to look at this. Whoop, sorry about that. I got my thing off. Chuck is calling me on the phone. I don't believe this. <laughs> so anyway, oh, praise the Lord. Anyhow, yeah, Chuck is calling me on. Um, and I think I've lost my connection with Facebook. I'm not sure. Chuck. I'm yeah. Um, I've done something wrong here. Okay, glory to God. I think you're on. I, no, I am on. I just had something wrong with my thing. Right. <laughs> okay, let's get back to it. Praise the Lord. I think the devil don't want you to hear this today. <laughs> I don't believe he does because if you hear it and you really receive it, it's going to change your life. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just want to stop right here, right now, and we just pray that, Father, this word will go forth with no troubles, with no problems, that, Lord God, the, the 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 people will be able to receive it and in, in have a, a new way of walking in a new life. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, the word reveals the righteousness of God in us. Look what it says. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction and for instructions in what? Righteousness. Instructions in how to do it the right way. Instructions and in righteousness that the man of God may be what? Complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's what we desire. Everybody in this world wants to be complete. They want to have the sense of being complete. They want to have the satisfaction of being complete. And they want to be able to do the right thing, equipped to do the right thing, equipped to do good works, every good work, everything. That, in other words, they want to have the ability to whenever they do something, it turns out right. You know, you hear people say it all the time. You know, that person, they, they, they just, everything they touch turns to gold. Well, that's what everybody wants. They want everything that they touch turned to gold. They want to have the blessing come in into their life, and that blessing's only going to come into their life whenever they get it right. <laughs> you do it the right way, do it God's way. And look what, look, look, look what it says in Psalm 23 here. It says, and he leads us. He says, he leads us into his righteousness. He restores our soul. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. Actual in the Hebrew, entrenchments of righteousness for his namesake. Listen. Jesus wants you to walk righteous and upright before him. He wants you to have righteousness living and abiding in you for his sake. Because, I mean, let me tell you why. He went to the cross. He took your sin and my sin upon his own self and so that he could exchange for our sins his righteousness. And it's for he wants you to be a successful and walking in righteousness and then anybody else because he paid an awesome price so that you could be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and to have that righteousness manifesting in your life every day. So what does it mean to restore your soul? It means to renew your mind and renew the way you're thinking. Remember the last scripture, the all scriptures? are inspired by God, and that one of the things that it does is it instructs you in righteousness, changing the way you think. I'm going to let you know, the way you think is the way you're going to go. The direction you're going to go in is the direction you're thinking in. 
I promise you, I'm going to tell you, I'm 68 years old. I've seen it so many times. Everything, every time somebody thinks in a certain way, you see their life going that way. You could, you can almost become a prophet and say, I can see where you're going to be going in the next, in the near future. How do you know that? Because I can see the way you're thinking. The way you're thinking is the way you're being driven. And if you're thinking the wrong things, you're going to be driven the wrong way. If you're thinking God's way, then you're going to be having God's results in your life. So he restores your soul. He changes the way you're thinking so that he can lead you in the paths of righteousness for his sake. He wants to lead you in these paths. Let me tell you something. God's not leaving you on your own. He's not saying, I want you to live right. Now go do it. He's saying, I want to work together with you, and I want to lead you. I want to take your hand. I'm going to take your hand, and I'm going to lead you into the paths of righteousness. It's all about relationship, folks. <clears throat> it's all about having a relationship with the Word of God, having a relationship with God the Father, taking your step by step and walking with Him in this righteousness. And listen, righteousness is, go is, our, is a power, is a force that is God's power. It's God's force. It's God's moving in our life and changing the things of our life. I love this scripture in Genesis, it, it describes to us the very first time <laughs> righteousness was saying, somebody, God said to somebody, you're righteous. Look what it says in Genesis 15, 6. This is where God was talking to Abraham and telling him what he was going to do. And, and, then, and then Abraham believed in the Lord. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed what God had said to him. And then what God did was turn around and he says, this is righteousness. I count your faith in what I say for your righteousness. Now, the difference between then and today is Abraham was not made the righteousness of God in him. He was accounted for. It was a credit. He credited righteousness to Abraham by his faith. And, and so, therefore, Abraham was righteous in the sight of God. And did Abraham do everything right? No, he did not. He actually lied, for, I think it's three times, about his wife, two or three times, about his wife saying it was his sister so that he wouldn't get, you know, in trouble or have any problems. You know, he, he wasn't the perfect man. Nobody, nobody's actually walking this earth perfect but Jesus. But he did have something. He had faith. He had faith in God that he would do what he said. <clears throat> that led him into righteousness. And so, therefore, he stood on that righteousness throughout his life. And he became a very wealthy man because of it. He became a very successful man. Look at this scripture. This is by faith. <clears throat> it's not by the law. The same way with Abraham. It wasn't by law. In fact, there was no law at time, the time of Abraham, none whatsoever. There wasn't no thou shalt not. It was just God saying, I'm going to do this, and he believed God. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 through 11. It says, Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge, listen, for the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Everything else I'm going to put away. Everything else I'm going to count as lost. I'm not going to, it's not important to me. The thing that's important to me is the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, to know who he is, to know him. We need to seek the Lord Jesus Christ, his word, his will, his way, more and more and more. Because, see, this is where righteousness is able to be manifested in our life. If we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, even though you stand in a place of righteousness with God because of Jesus, that righteousness, the benefits and the results of that righteousness only comes into your life when it starts flowing out of your life. That righteousness sets things in place. It sets things in order. So I'm going to count everything in my past 
lost. I'm gonna count everything that I think is valuable lost. If it comes up against the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, it's lost to me. That's what I. This is the way I'm thinking. It says for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. It says I count them but rubbish that I may gain what Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, that righteousness of what I think I can do it right, which is from the law, but that which is through what? Faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Listen, that's why I am encouraging you to renew your mind, to change your thinking the way God thinks because your faith toward God and what he's saying to you at righteousness that is in you because of Christ Jesus is going to start flowing through you and out of you and into your life. And it's only going to be doing it by faith. Faith is what we say and believe. Listen, faith is a positive response to God and his word. Faith is whenever I say, I believe it, just like what Abraham said, I believe it. I believe you, Lord. And then he responded to that, and he did what the Lord had asked him to do. Then the next thing you know, blessings come. That I may know him, that I may know God, that I may know Jesus, and the power, the power of, of his resurrection. I want I don't want just want to get go to heaven one day. I want to know the power of the resurrection of Jesus now. I want to know healing now. I want to know deliverance now. I want to know financial prosperity now. I want to know what it's like to live in the peace of God now. I don't want it when I go to heaven. I do want it when I go to heaven, but I don't want it just when I go to heaven, I want it now. And for it to be manifest in my life now, I have to walk in that righteousness that's been freely given to me by God, and I have to walk in it with faith. Faith is the way it's appropriated in my life. And the fellowship, I, I, I listen, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, it says, being formed in his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Listen, I'm looking for that resurrection from the dead. If I, if Jesus doesn't come back, I'm going to be finding myself in the same place everybody else has when they come to the end of their life. But listen, there's going to come a day that God's going to raise up our bodies and he's going to make them celestial bodies and we're going to rule and reign with him forever. Hallelujah. I'm excited about that, and I know you are too. But look, look on in let's, Romans chapter uh, chapter three, and verse 20, twenty-one through twenty-six. Let's look what it says. It says, "But now, say now, now, but now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, separated from the law, the law has nothing to do with this righteousness, is revealed." being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Listen, if you have, you, you, you got to have your faith in Jesus. You got to have your faith in Jesus, number one, that he died for your sins, that he hung on that cross to pay your sins in full, that he bore your sins in his own body on that tree. You got to have faith that God raised him from the dead and that he's see, seated on the right-hand side of God and he is holding his arms out to you and saying, come unto me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. You got to have faith in Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and not only in Jesus as the person, but Jesus, the word of God. You got to have faith in the promises that God has given to you to be able to have this righteousness manifesting itself in your life. Hallelujah. And to all and on all who believe this righteousness is to all, that's everybody, 
And on all, it's on me, hallelujah, who believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But being made justified freely by his grace through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Through the redemption of Jesus Christ that is in Jesus Christ. To whom God set forth as the propitiation or the payment in full by his blood through faith the payment in full for all our sins through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. He wants to demonstrate, this is what I'm trying to get across this morning, righteousness is not just being in right standing with God, it's having that righteousness rule and reign and be the dominant power in our life. It says through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at this present time his righteousness, that he might, listen, that he might be just, and God is just, and the justifier, the one who makes somebody just, of the ones who has faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. Justified, I love this this word. You know, whenever Adam did what he did, he broke what God had given. He broke it. It was broken. It's like a light. I don't I know some of you may know what electricity, how it works. But if you take a wire and you hook one, uh, there's two wires. You take a wire and you hook the negative and the positive to a light bulb. And then you run that negative and positive back around and you have a switch. And there's power or power source, and that power source runs through. And as long as that power source is running, that light bulb's going to be lit. But if you cut the wire, you have just did an injustice. You broke the flow. You broke <clears throat> the ability for that power to go through and keep that light bulb lit. Then somebody comes along and says, oh, I can fix that. And they take the two wires and they put them back together. As they look just as if they had never been broken. Just as if they had never been broken. And the power <clears throat> is flowing through the wire and lighting the light bulb again. It's justified. It's been made just as if it weren't broken. We've been made just as if we haven't sinned. But we have to receive that by faith in Jesus Christ alone. He is our righteousness. No one else. Nothing you can do right is going to make you righteous. Righteousness comes from Jesus Christ. And it's our faith in what his finished work has done for us in our lives. And he's made us justified. Just is if we never sin. I don't know about you guys, but that's exciting to me. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Look here at the, uh, uh, it says the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is the power of God. Look what it says, Romans 1, 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, the good news. That's what I've been preaching to you today. I've been preaching good news to you. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, listen, in what? The gospel, the good news, for in it, the gospel of Jesus, the good news about Jesus Christ, in it, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from what? Faith to faith. When you take that faith and you express that faith, the righteousness of God is being revealed. You just say something else comes up in your life. When you express that faith, the righteousness of God is being revealed. And so the, every step of faith we take, and it'd be good if we took just started walking by faith, right? 
Every step of faith we take, the righteousness of God is revealed in us, through us, and in our lives. Hallelujah. Because as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. Now, in the scripture, the next scripture, I didn't have it printed out. I was playing around this morning. I didn't get to it like I should. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, it says, For he has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Wisdom, righteousness. He, Jesus, has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. He is our righteousness. He is the one who, in him, when we're in him, he's the one who sets us apart. He's our righteousness. Jesus is our righteousness. You should say that out loud. Jesus is my righteousness. He is my righteousness. You can't make righteousness. You can't earn righteousness. Your righteousness, to, is, is, as Isaiah said, is like filthy rags. Listen, Jesus is your righteousness. Receive that today by faith. Receive it right now by faith. Say, I'll receive it. I'll receive you, Jesus, as my righteousness. You are my righteousness, and I receive it. You've been made to me righteous. Hallelujah. So therefore, you don't have to earn it. You don't have to do something good to get it. You don't have to live by the law to get it because, see, we fulfill the law, but we fulfill it by faith, with faith. We don't fulfill it by uh, our uh, self-efforts. We fulfill it by faith. So Jesus being made righteous unto us, we do nothing but receive it. So receive it now. I receive you, Jesus, as my righteousness. I thank you that you are my righteousness. I am not righteous because of my good deeds. I'm righteous from the top of my head to the soles of my feet because you are my righteousness, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you get to that point in your life, when you see this in your life, there's no, listen, there's no doubt in your heart ever again, never ever again, who you are in Christ Jesus and where you're going to be spending your eternal existence. I know I'm spending mine with, with Jesus. Because listen, there is nobody in this world that has the right to be going to heaven more than me. Because see, Jesus is my right to go to heaven. He is my righteousness in everything. He's my right to be healed. He's my right to be delivered. He's my right to have all my needs met according to his riches and glory. He's my right to have peace living in my life. He's my righteousness. And he's my right to go into the kingdom and the gates of heaven. Hallelujah. He's my right to be able to go before the throne of God without any fear of condemnation or sense of guilt. Hallelujah. But to go there freely, happily, to receive grace, to find mercy whenever I have a need in my life. He's my right. He's your right. And he's your righteousness. And whenever you go before the Lord God, you go before him in the name of Jesus. And you go before him in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you love it when we preach Jesus? I love Jesus with all my heart. I'm telling you, I really do. Listen, the next scripture is in 1 Corinthians chapter, I mean, uh, Isaiah, I'm sorry. Isaiah 53, verse 4 through 6. This is what it says. Surely. He has borne our sicknesses and carried our diseases. It says their pains and sorrows. Surely he's borne our pains and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But listen, he was wounded for my transgressions. That's what you are to say to yourself. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. And my, the chastisement of my peace was upon him. He was chastised and with no peace on the cross so that I could receive peace in his presence in heaven. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and he was chastised for my peace. And the 
by his stripes I was healed. Hallelujah. So Jesus, this scripture here is the atonement scripture telling us that he is paid in full completely for our sins, for our unrighteousness, for our iniquities, for all that we have that God hated, all that we have, have that God that God condemned, all that we have that God would have judged to death, Jesus took it. He took it upon himself so that you and me wouldn't have to. In fact, we just exchanged all of that for his righteousness, for his right standing with God, for his righteousness flowing in our life, manifestations of righteousness in our life. Let me ask you, are you the righteousness of God? Hallelujah. Are you righteous? Yes, you are. If you've asked Jesus in your heart, if you are seeking him, you desire his will and his way, you are the righteousness of God in him. Look, look at this next scripture. Oh, man. First Corinthians, second Corinthians, rather. Second Corinthians and chapter um, uh, five, Second Corinthians chapter five, uh, my thing just jumped up all of a sudden for some reason. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse 21. And this is what it says. He, God, made him, Jesus, to be sin. God made Jesus to be sin. Well, where did he get the sin from? He got it from us. He took our sin. That sin came from us. He made, God made Jesus sin. Listen to what it says. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus took our sin so that he could exchange it for our, his righteousness. He took my sin. I take his righteousness. This is a free gift. It belongs to you. It belongs to me. It belongs to all of us. We have that righteousness in us through Christ Jesus. And so therefore, we should take that righteousness and live in it. Hallelujah. Let it be the rule of our lives. Hallelujah. Look what it says there in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It says, this is what it says. Listen, all these scriptures that I haven't written down there, these are ones I've memorized. They're in my heart. You know why they're in my heart? Because I use them. <laughs> I put them to work in my life. I do speak these words over my life. But it says, surely he bore our sins on the tree, on that tree. That we should be dead to sin. And I always add, because it's in the Greek, it's results and rewards. And alive unto righteousness. Alive unto righteousness. It's results and rewards. And by his stripes, I am healed. I am alive unto righteousness. I'm dead to sin. Jesus took my sin in his own body on the tree that I could be dead to sin and alive to righteousness. Hallelujah. And so therefore, I am alive to righteousness. And I'm dead to sin. Sin has no place in me. I refuse it. And when I come to the place to where I decide I'm going to die to sin, then that means I make the choice that it's no longer alive in my life. And I'm going to make the choice that I'm alive under righteousness. I'm alive under not only the standard of it, but the moving of it in my life. Hallelujah. We should all be that way. Look what it says in Titus chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. It says, but when the kindness and love of God, our, our Savior, uh, uh, toward men appeared, that was Jesus, hallelujah, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us, not according to the works of righteousness or self-efforts, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And through the washing, he washed it. The washing of generation, gener, generation and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, 
whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Listen, because of Jesus, because of the washing of that blood of Jesus Christ, because of the, the, the renewing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in me, in you, teaching us, leading us, guiding us, changing our thinking because of him and because of the abundance of grace that God has toward us. We've been justified by that wonderful grace so that we should be heirs of God. Hallelujah. According to the hope of eternal life, we are heirs of right now at this moment. I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. The things he has is mine. This member of the bank, I can't get the money that belongs to me out of the bank unless I do it the right way. I can't get the things that truly belong to me in my inheritance unless I do it the right way. Amen. Righteousness is a free gift and we should live in that righteousness. It's ours. It's ours to live by. Hallelujah. In Proverbs, <clears throat> where we stand on time. In Proverbs, we're getting close. We're going to, we're actually right at the point where we need to stop. So I'm gonna, I'll send these scriptures out to you guys uh, in email again. And uh, if you're not getting them, you know, you can uh, message me and I will uh, send them to you. And we will, uh, and you can have the scriptures personally yourself. And Susan, come back on around here. She's over there studying and communicating with all you guys. Ah. But, yeah, but we're going to be uh, uh, looking forward to seeing you guys in person, hugging you, cooking some fish or some chicken or something, mm -hmm. and just enjoying our fellowship together. And uh, again, happy Mother's Day. Yes, happy and, Mother's uh, Day. you know, we love y'all and hope that you have the best of days. And, uh, and even our puppy dogs. You know, they send card, give a card to to her on. They're yeah, they're the kid. In fact, I sometimes I wonder if I could get love just half as much. <laughs> rub your tummy. Rub my tummy. But anyway, so it's good to see y'all. We love you, and we will uh, be back together again soon. Don't forget 10 o'clock. Don't forget 10 o'clock. We're having church, church at New Life Church. And so look at for it on YouTube or Facebook. Father, thank you for our friends and for our family and for those that are listening, Lord. And I pray that this word will go into their hearts and they will bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless and you. And we love, love you. you and see you later. Bye.